Um, now, World Athletics, as as Kane just said, has banned transgender women from competing in the female category at international events. The president, Lord Cuse, at Co, said no transgender athlete who had gone through male puberty would be permitted to compete in female world ranking competitions from the 31st of March. Now, a working group, he said, will be set up to further research into eligibility. I can't even say guidelines. Uh, we're not saying no forever, he said. Joining us now is senior sports ethics expert. But Dr. John Pike, John, good morning. Thank you for joining me. Um, morning, this Jeremy. is always one of those subjects that causes great confusion, great debate. What is your response to the decision yesterday by Lord Coe and, and World Athletics? I think it's very good news. I think it's very good news for women's sport and very good news for fair sport. Um, this has been a long uh, journey down a cul-de-sac the cul-de-sac of uh, testosterone levels, lowering testosterone levels as a way to make uh, male-bodied athletes eligible to compete in female sport. And I think we perhaps could have seen at the start that this wasn't going to work, um, but I think what's happened, what happened yesterday is the end of the road for, for that way of trying to include uh, trans women in female sport. Um, having said that, the UCI, the Cyclist um, International Federation, still adopts a testosterone limit uh, policy. I think that's got to go. World Triathlon has a testosterone limit policy. Um, I think that has to go because we're seeing really a failure of that approach and an emphasis on uh, the right area and that is male puberty. It's male puberty that makes it the case that it's unfair for male-bodied athletes to compete with female athletes, however they identify. And I think I think what's really interesting, John, and I'm delighted to have you on this morning and touch upon something that, that as I said to you, causes such argument because so many of things, uh, this is my opinion, I'm entitled to it, so many things like this particular issue, I think, get hijacked. I think there's a very serious point. I think there's a, a, a point that transgender people in, in this country and across the world need, and have needed for many years, greater understanding and they need help. But, and I, and I don't mean help in a bad way before anybody jumps on, I'm talking uh, help in all sorts of ways, we as a society. But there are certain decisions that have been made in the past that are beyond ludicrous. And what happens is, if you disagree with them, you get tarred, you get told you're this, that and the other. I think it's a very sensible decision. I think it's only absolutely fair. And in trying to do right by transgender athletes, right, you have to do right by female athletes and you have to do right by male athletes. That surely is the basis of sport, that everybody starts at the same level. Because for years, of course, you know, there were drug cheats and we managed to weed many of them out. I think, I think, one, I think it's the same sensible decision, John, and I think it's, I think a lot of people will go, yeah, absolutely spot on, there'll be one or two jump up and down, but I think it's the right decision. Yes, I think, uh, well, I, I agree with you. I think it's worth thinking about how we got here. And one of the ways that we got here was the exclusion of female athletes, female athletes' voices from the consultation yeah. Yeah. Uh, procedures. And one of the things that happened is the sense, and we saw a bit of this yesterday, one of the things that happened is a sense that this is a an issue on which trans people should have the leading voice. And you see that reflected in, in Sebastian Coe saying, we're going to set up this new working group and it must have a trans athlete in the chair. Now, why not a sports scientist in the chair? Why not an expert on fairness in the chair? Why not, heaven forfend, a woman athlete in the chair? Um, and it's been thought that this is, if you like, a technical problem or a scientific problem um, uh, that trans athletes take, tra trans people take the lead on and has no effect on anyone else. And clearly it does have an effect on other Absolutely. people, specifically on, on female athletes. Now, one of the interesting and important things about World Ath Athletics' decision is not just that it um, concerns World Athletics events, but it sort of sets the tone for community sport and grassroots sport and school sport. And one of the really heartening things that I saw yesterday was the English Schools Athletic Association announcing or reaffirming its policy, 
which is along the lines of the world athletics policy because sport must be fair all the way down all the way through the different levels um, and whilst there are not uh, trans athletes competing at the elite international level which world athletics kind of primarily focuses on it's very important to have consistent and principled fair sport all the way through uh, and on a global basis. So it's very welcome news. I absolutely agree with you, Dr. John Pike. I really appreciate it. I know we had some technical difficulties we have all morning, but thank you so much. John Pike, sports ethics expert and senior lecturer in philosophy.